you know, for a show that has its main character constantly saying this is the way, season three of The Mandalorian is not the way. Season three of The Mandalorian was just incredibly boring and overall it was really bad. The concept of the Mandalorian in the first two seasons was very simple. It was a lone Mandalorian, a gunslinger, going around doing bounty hunting stuff until he finds young Grogu, and then he adopts Grogu, kind of in like a father-son dynamic thing. He's trying to like rescue him and keep him away from Moff Gideon. It was fairly simple. It was an adventure of the week type of show, and overall it was cool. And not to mention, at the beginning, the show was incredibly well shot. Not only did you have Greg Frazier involved in this, but you also had a bunch of really cool directors putting their own little spin on the Star Wars mythology. You had the inclusion of Dave Filoni on the creative team along as Jon Favreau, and overall The Mandalorian was cool. And season 2 continued along a similar trend, it brought back beloved characters like Boba Fett and Ahsoka Tano, and it also had the incredibly cool cameo of Luke Skywalker at the end. Though to be fair, looking back at that episode, um, yeah, the CGI on Luke does not hold up at all. I mean, at the time I knew it didn't look that great, but I also said to myself, it's Luke Skywalker, I don't care, it's, it's really cool, and it is really cool, it's just like, he doesn't look that great. Even in Boba Fett, the CGI is cool, but it's also, like, uncharacteristically weird. Like, at the end of the day, they should have just recast. And then coming into The Mandalorian Season 3, you had the baggage of The Book of Boba Fett, a spin-off series starring Boba Fett, where Boba Fett wasn't really Boba Fett, he was just some dude that wasn't really as ruthless as the Boba Fett that you knew. And the whole time he's just like, oh, I want to rule Tatooine with respect, not fear, and I'm like, but you need both in order to do it, you just don't have to be an asshole. It... It was weird, but then you also had the weird conundrum where all of a sudden, halfway through the Book of Boba Fett, it suddenly just becomes the Mandalorian 2.5, and we have Din Djarin basically have a whole episode just doing Mandalorian stuff, and it's a cool episode, in fact, it's probably the best episode of the Book of Boba Fett, but it's weird because the show is called the Book of Boba Fett, and then they bring back Din Djarin, and they do this cool side quest thing with him and the Darksaber and all that, and then when you get into the Mandalorian Season 3, it's just really weird because they kind of just rush past it all, like, even in the recap, they don't address the fact that Din and Grogu reunited in the Book of Boba Fett, and they barely address stuff from the Book of Boba Fett, like, you have Din walking in, in the first episode to meet with the Armorer, and she just goes, oh, you've not bathed in the living waters of Mandalore, blah blah blah, this is the way, you are Mandalorian no more, and Din's just like, okay, cool, I'm gonna go repent, but it's like, if you've seen the Book of Boba Fett, He's just repeated information that he's just said in the Book of Boba Fett. But then also Grogu's is there as well and it's, it's so weird. So already they start off the season on a bad foot because they haven't addressed the fact that Din and Grogu reunited in the Book of Boba Fett. And so if you kind of just watch Mandalorian Season 2 and then you go straight into Season 3, you're going to be like, wait, what? I thought Din and Grogu just parted ways and now they're acting like they've been together for ages. What happened? And when it comes to Din's redemption subplot, they kind of just brush by it really quickly, and in a lot of ways, the whole season makes Din look really stupid and useless. It takes, what, two to three episodes for Din to get redeemed, but because the episodes are so padded out and so, like, fillerish, it doesn't feel satisfying when he is redeemed. Not to mention, him bathing the waters of Mandalore isn't this really, like, really big ceremonial spiritual thing. He kind of just, like, plonks down to the bottom of the, the river, and it's like, huh? Did he slip? Did he get grabbed by something? No, he just fell, and it's like, what? They made Din look really incompetent in this season. And I think that is inherently the overarching problem with The Mandalorian Season 3. It's the fact that all the cool story ideas that was set up in the Season 2 of The Mandalorian and the ending of Book of Boba Fett stuff, the whole Din trying to get redeemed, Din having the Darksaber, Bo-Katan and Din's rivalry, they kind of, like, undo all of that, and they do it in the most unsatisfying way possible. Like, the way Bo-Katan gets the Darksaber back is just so lazy. It's like, Din gets captured by this thing, and then so he loses possession of it. And then Bo-Katan takes the Darksaber and then kills the thing that captured Din, so she is now the owner of the Darksaber. They pull an Elder Wand, essentially. And the annoying thing is that they don't address it until, like, three to four episodes later, when Bo-Katan is trying to reunite all the clans, and they're just like, Ha! No, you don't have the Darksaber! And Din's just like, actually... She does, because of this technicality, and I'm like, okay, not only did you just pull a JK Rowling and literally do the Elder One thing, but also, you did it in the most, like, unsatisfactory way. Like, season two of The Mandalorian makes it seem like, oh, there's gonna be such a conflict between Din and Bo. Like, at some point, like, Bo's gonna be, like, after Din, and they're gonna have a cool epic battle. Or maybe, you know, Din Djarin is gonna become the leader of The Mandalorians and unite them all, and then, you know, he's going to rule Mandal- No, they didn't do that. They didn't even do a Jon Snow with Daenerys Targaryen type of romance with Bo-Katan and Din Djarin where it's like, oh yeah, they both technically could be heirs to Mandalore and they kind of like marry and like marriage the two together. They don't do any of that. They just wrap up the story in the most boring way and it's like, what is the point? And then the whole concept of the Darksaber is so pointless because Moff Gideon fights Bo-Katan and then Moff Gideon destroys the Darksaber and it's kind of just like, oh... What was the point of the Darksaber then? Oh, oh Bo-Katan reunited all the clans together. That's great. 
So what was the point of the like the the dark saber? Why they don't even make it a point of just like oh the dark saber was pointless. It was just a symbol. We don't need a symbol now. We have a new leader in Boca. They don't address it. It's so lazy. Not to mention the filler episodes this season were hilariously bad. Like. The episode where, like, the, the boy Mandalorian gets kidnapped and then Paz Vizsla's all just like, oh, we have to go after it. And then, you know, the big pterodactyl thing, like, regurgitates him and Paz Vizsla's just like, that's my son! And it's, it's so weird because Paz Vizsla, the whole episode is just like, oh, yeah, we're on this mission. We're going to hunt down the pterodactyl thing. And it's just as they're going into the nest to try and rescue the kid when he's just like, that's my son! And it's like... You waited until now to reveal that information that he's his son? And then the Jack Black and Lizzo episode was just weird as well. It's like, why is Lizzo in Star Wars? And like, the thing with Jack Black is that he is doing a character thing. Like, he's doing a little character bit. He has a take on the character. He's very, oh, the, the, the city of blah, 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 fulcrum. Blah. Like, he's playing a character, but because he's Jack Black, and Jack Black is so iconic and recognizable as an actor... He just sticks out like a sore thumb. And then we get to the controversial episode that's, I think, three or four. The one that takes place on Coruscant with Dr. Pershing and the Imperial Lady. Because, on the one hand, I get where the people who like the episode are coming from. The idea of, oh, we get to see more of Coruscant post-original trilogy. And we get to see how the Imperials are being treated. And there is, like, cool character stuff in there. But then, on the other hand, which is the one I agree with, where the show is called The Mandalorian. I'm here to see Din Djarin and Bo-Katan and the Mandalorians and all that. And we get them for, like, ten minutes in the episode. But overall, that, that Coruscant episode was just weird to me. It felt like Black Mirror, but Star Wars. But it also felt really inorganic like for some odd reason the mandalorian itself at times feels like it's written by an ai or like it's directed by an ai or it's just made by an ai in general there's so much about it that just doesn't feel authentic and just feels really inorganic and it doesn't like correlate in my brain is like yes i'm watching actual characters like feel and move and breathe in these spaces like that whole episode is just weird. But then also the wrap-up to the season was also really boring as well. Like, Moff Gideon shows up without his moustache. But it's funny, because they release a poster with Moff Gideon, and he has his moustache. But then in the actual episodes, he doesn't have a moustache. And so it's kind of just like, oh, you just reused the old pictures of Moff Gideon from the previous seasons and used it as a season 3 poster. So the laziness is already showing in the marketing. But then, yeah, Moff Gideon just shows up in, like, Dark Trooper armor, and is made of Beskar, and he, like, kills Paz Vizsla with the Praetorian Guards or whatever, and... That whole finale, that whole, like, two-part of finale was such a boring, boring finale, especially compared to the season two finale, which was very exciting. This one was just visual noise. I was just seeing it, and I was like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't care. This is actually boring to watch. I wasn't paying attention. And then the way they wrap up the season is just so anticlimactic. It's like, oh, Din sees Appa from Kim's Convenience, and he's just like, oh, Din... You can, like, you know, be the special Imperial Scout thing and help us defeat the remnants of the Empire. And Din's just like, okay, cool, but also, I'm gonna lay low and be with the kid because Grogu's my apprentice now. And even then, the way Grogu becomes his apprentice is so weird because Grogu is too young to speak the creed. But then Din is just like, oh no, he's my ward, I'm gonna make him my apprentice because I adopt him. And they're just like, this is the way. And the thing is, too, is that they don't even address, like, the cool, interesting nuances of Mandalorian culture. Like, Bo-Katan comes from a different faction of the Mandalorians. And then Din's faction of the Mandalorians is very cultish. And at the start, they kind of do a little bit where Bo-Katan is redeemed in the waters and then she doesn't wear her helmet. And then the armor is suddenly just like, actually, no, Bo-Katan can take off her helmet because she's the best of both worlds. And it's like... Wait, what? They don't explore any of the nuances of the Mandalorians. They don't delve into it because, yes, Din's whole faction of the Mandalorians are quite cultish. But they don't raise any interesting political ideas and themes about it. They just go, oh yeah, cool, this is the way. And so yeah, Din and Grogu get like a little happy ending where like they're just chilling on like some little outdoor farm thing. And it's like, okay, cool, whatever. The whole season itself just feels really like a waste of time. But the biggest takeaway I got from The Mandalorian Season 3 is that the Mandalorian formula is so overplayed, I'm done with it. The Mandalorian formula is fairly simple. It's, oh, hey, Din, you have to go do this thing. So Din goes to go do this thing, but he meets a bunch of people, and they're just like, oh, we don't like Mandalorians, but hey, if you do this thing for us, then we will help you get the thing because you need to go get the thing to do the thing. It's so played out. Not to mention the fact the early episodes just keep contradicting the Mandalorian formula in a sense. Like, the first episode, Din's just like, oh, I need to explore the surface of Mandalore and see if it's, you know, breathable. And so I need a droid, but I don't trust any other droids, so I want IG-11 specifically. And then they try to bring IG-11 back and it's like, oh no, his memory chip's broken. He's like gonna, you know, 
kill people and it's not good and Din's just like but I need him he's the droid and then so in episode 2 he goes to Tatooine to see Mechanic Lady and Mechanic Lady's just like just use R5 and Din's just like eh, sure whatever and he takes R5 and it's kind of just like so what was the point of the whole subplot of the first episode where Din wants to get IG-11 back but he doesn't trust droids so he won't get another droid but then he goes to Mechanic Lady and she's just like take the other droid it's such a waste. What was the point? And then in the finale, they just half ass it where they're just like, oh yeah, IG-11's back. And it's like, oh, oh, okay. Also, I am so tired of baby Grogu's shtick. Like, don't get me wrong, Grogu is cute, but by the end of the season, Grogu adds nothing to the story. Oh yeah, Grogu now is adopted by Din and is now Din Grogu. Great. But then it's also just like, Grogu doesn't actually grow throughout the season. At the very least, you'd have expected him to have started to speak, because in the first episode or second episode, I think they tease him trying to speak. He's like babbling, going, kah, 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 trying to say this is the way. And you'd have thought that in the finale, even though he can't take the creed, he goes, this is the way. He doesn't do that, so what is the po- at the end of the day, I'm not going to deep it, like, I'm not the hugest Star Wars fan ever, but I do understand the cultural impact of Star Wars, and right now, I, I really just- don't care what they're doing anymore. I was excited. I liked The Mandalorian Season 1 and 2. They were fun. They were not the peak of television or anything, but they were fun things to watch. And just seeing Season 3 just be so lame? What is the purpose of this, like, shared Disney Plus Star Wars universe? Like, I didn't even watch Andor. I don't care to watch Andor. I, like, I came to watch The Mandalorian to see some cool Mandalorian stuff, and Din Belly does that. He only did that in, what, like, Season 1? And then, like, a little bit in the Book of Boba Fett. Not to mention the fact the production value of The Mandalorian Season 3 is just lesser compared to the previous seasons. You look at Season 1, which is shot by Oscar-winning director of photography Greg Frazier, and it looks gorgeous. You look at it now, and it just looks ugly. It looks like the way the Book of Boba Fett is shot. All the highlights look overexposed, and it doesn't, it doesn't look aesthetic. But to wrap things up, The Mandalorian Season 3 was not good. It was a massive disappointment. All the interesting story ideas were wrapped up in a half assed way and was completely unsatisfactory. Its main character of Din Djarin barely feels like the main character and overall, it was not engaging to watch. There was like a couple of good things maybe like here and there, but at the end of the day, I didn't care. But those are just my thoughts on The Mandalorian Season 3. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, follow me on social media, all that good stuff. And until we meet again, I'll see you guys next time.